Number 52. An object is dropped from a height of 75 meters above ground level. Determine the distance traveled during the first second. All right. So we have an object, right? And it's dropped, okay, from a height, it tells us, of 75.0 meters. So let's just assume it goes to here. And um, it says it's just dropped, right? So that means that there is no initial velocity imparted on it. So therefore, its initial velocity should be equal to zero meters per second. Um, we, we want to then calculate the distance traveled in the first second. Okay, so let's just assume that this is the part, or this is the for letter A. All right, let's say this is the uh, location at which it would have reached during one second of its travel. Okay, so the time to go from the start to here is going to be one second. All right, so t here is going to equal one. Uh, doesn't matter. I'm just going to do one second. I was going to write 1.00, but whatever. So now um, they're asking me then to calculate this part of the height, right? This x value here. Okay, so what else do we know about this? Well, we also know the uh, acceleration, right? It's a free fall problem, so it's negative 9.80 meters per second. All right, great. Um, so do we have enough information now in order to solve for the height? We have the acceleration, we have the initial velocity, we have time, and now we need to find x, right? Look at the equations on the right-hand side, uh, and we do, right? It would be equation number two. So let's write that. For, so letter A here, we're going to do the displacement is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one-half of the acceleration multiplied by time squared. So the uh, displacement is what we're looking for. The initial velocity was zero, so that whole term just cancels. Multiply by one-half times the acceleration, which was negative 9.80. And the time they said was one second, so that's squared. So the displacement now will be, just plug that into the calculator. Well, it's half, I mean, one squared is one, right? So then half of 9.8 is negative 4.9. I'll just do three significant figures. This should be meters. So that's how far it travels in the first second. Okay, great. So that takes care of part A. Now it says determine the <clears throat> final velocity at which the object hits the ground. So now the frame is slightly different, meaning that the starting point will be the point up at the top here, okay? And now the ending value is gonna be down here at the bottom, okay? So again, my initial is still the same. It's still starting at zero meters per second. And what I'm trying to do down here now is find the final velocity. That's the question mark. What else do I know about this frame in a yellow? I also know it's acceleration. Right, that would equal a negative 9.80 meters per second. And I also know the height, right? The total height here. The total height here is 75, okay, meters. Now just be careful, the height is 75 meters, but when you plug in this number into your calculations, you gotta make sure it's negative. Why? Because it starts high, ends low, you gotta have a negative sign, okay, for the height. It's traveling, excuse me, it's traveling in the negative y direction. So do we know a formula that relates displacement, initial velocity, acceleration, and final velocity? Yes, we do, right? Equation number four. So let's use equation number four here that I just boxed in to help us solve for B. So the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity is what I'm after. The initial velocity was zero, so that's just zero plus then two times the acceleration, negative 9.81. Well, in some books they use 9.81, but this one uses 9.80. And uh, the displacement now, again, this is important. You gotta be negative 75, okay? And you'll see, it's important. Actually, in terms of the magnitude, it won't, since there's no initial velocity, the magnitude will be right, but the sign would be a little messed up if it weren't negative. So two times 9.8, times 75 is now going to be okay. So we have, right, I'm just making, yep, okay, so the number is a little bigger. So we have a value of 1,000, and I'm going to do three significant figures, 470, no decimal. So now when I take the square root, I can take the square root since it's a positive number. So the final velocity here will be pos plus and minus. 
Okay, you every time you take the square root, you get both plus and minus answers. So now when I take the square root of that, I get 38.3 meters per second. Now only one of those values, positive or negative, will make sense. Which one do you think? Right, the negative one. The negative one is the one that makes sense. Why? Because it's traveling in the negative y direction. So since velocity is a vector, you have to tell you you have to also give its direction. Okay? So it's going to be a negative value. So let me just erase then the positive here. Okay, since I don't want to accept that answer. And this would now be the final velocity when it hits the ground. So that's the answer to part B. Now C, it says, okay, so C it says determine the distance traveled during the last second of motion before hitting the ground. Okay. So this one's a little more involved. There's a couple of steps. So let me actually redraw the picture, all right, just because it's getting a little messy. So again, here's, here's the uh, object. It travels down with a certain initial velocity, and that's zero, right? It's going to, the whole thing is 75 meters until it hits the ground over here. And what we're looking to do now is we're looking to find um, the distance traveled during the last second. So if we, if we were to imagine, the last second would be around here. I mean, I'm making it up, right? But as this rock travels down here, this would be considered now the uh, last second of travel. So from this point all the way down to this point, okay? So here's the last second of travel, right? Right in here, let me just change the color, right in here. That looks like a three, but I think you get it, right? This would be the displacement. This is what we're after. So I'm now framing the problem. If you notice this, I'm trying to frame this pretty well here, right? I have a clear, if I'm trying to find the displacement, I can do this in a couple of ways. I mean, I can, in order to find this displacement, right? What I could do is I could find the displacement from the start all the way down to this point and then just subtract it from 75. That's one way to go about it. There's other ways to go about it too. But I'm just thinking, eh, that might be the best way to do it. Let me just think. I mean, we could also go about it by finding the total time and whatnot, but let's do it that way. So let's focus. Well, actually, no. Actually, we do have to find the total time anyway. Yeah. So the first step is, so I know that also the time to go from this point to that point is going to be one second. Okay, so the time value in here is also one second. So really what I need to do is I, I got to find some information out about this point. All right, I, I know what the final is here, but I don't know what the initial conditions are like. So how am I going to find uh, that information? Well, I'm going to find that information uh, by finding the total time of the whole thing, right? The whole thing, and then subtract out one second. That'll tell me the time to this location. Once I know the time to this location, what I can then do is solve, let's say, the velocity at that point. All right, and that should help me along now. Okay, so let's, uh, so let's calculate that. So let's find, so the first step here for part C, it's going to be multiple steps. So first step is, uh, so part C, let's say number one, is find total time. Okay, so to find the total time, I'm considering the total frame, meaning from the start all the way to the end. Okay, so the initial velocity for that whole thing is going to be zero. The final velocity we actually just found, right? That was the whole point of part B. So we know that that will be negative 38.3 meters per second. We also know that the acceleration is still negative 9.80 meters per second squared. We do know the total displacement, remember, negative 75 meters. Um, so I can easily solve the time. I get a whole bunch of ways to do it. Uh, probably the way, let's see, which way should we? So the initial was given, right? The acceleration we know for a fact, and the X was given. So do we have an equation that would relate it to time? I want to try to avoid using this because maybe I made a mistake in my calculations and I don't want it to, I mean, I, I don't think I did, but um, I don't, if I were to have made a mistake, I wouldn't want it to propagate into this part. So that's why I'm only looking back to the givens. So yeah, I do know an equation that will relate these four variables. And that equation will be the second equation again here. Okay, so let's write that down. 
So change in displacement is equal to V initial velocity times time plus one half AT squared. So the displacement here was negative 75. The initial velocity was zero, right? So this whole thing just goes to zero. Plus then one half multiplied by negative 9.80 times T squared. So negative 75 is equal to negative 4.90 T squared. Divide out the negative 4.90, negative 4.90 on both sides. T squared becomes, so just plug that into the calculator. So 75 divided by uh, 4.9. The answer is going to be positive, and it should, because we got to take the square root. So this would be 15.3, and take the square root. Remember, when you take the square root of a number, it's always plus and minus. So second square root of 15.3 comes out to 3.91. Now only one of them will make sense in terms of sign-wise, and that'll be the positive one, because the time can't be negative here. We're starting at time zero. So what I'm gonna do is just erase that little negative sign. All right, so it's 3.9 seconds from the, from the top to the bottom, right? The whole thing. So if this, going back to the picture on the left, so if the time from this location, I'm gonna say is 3.91 seconds, all the way down to the bottom. How do I find the time to this point? Right, it would just be, you would have to subtract one from it, right? Because they told us during the last second. So to find the beginning of that last second, if I know the total distance of 3.91, just subtract one, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take, th and let me put it in a different color. All right, let me put it in, I'll put it in black. So we'll do 3.91 seconds minus one second. Should be then 2.91 seconds. Now this value, okay, is the value of the time from the beginning here all the way down to this point. That's the time. So if I know that time from this location to this location, right, I can now start solving for, let's say, displacements. Okay, so let's write down what we know about that frame. The initial velocity at the start there was still zero. That's still the same. The final velocity, I don't know. I tr may be trying to solve for that. We'll see. The time we just solved, it's 2.91 seconds. Okay, the displacement, I also don't know. And the um, acceleration, we do know, right? These are all the variables. I label them all out, negative 9.80 meters per second squared. So now what's the, important, uh, what's the important variable here? It's really the displacement, right? That's really what I'm after. So I know the time. I know the initial velocity. I know the acceleration. If I want to find my displacement now, can I use an equation on the, uh, one of those five equations at the top? Yeah, I can, right? Just erase all that. I can use the second one again. This one's very popular in this problem. So let's write it down. So the displacement, okay, is equal to initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. So the displacement is what I'm looking for. The initial velocity was zero, so that goes bye-bye. Then it's one half of negative 9.80 times the time of 2.91. Now, hopefully I didn't make a mistake with that because it will propagate on in, but I'm pretty sure I'm good. All right. By the way, all my self-doubting is not because I'm not confident about it, but I always like to doubt just to always keep double-checking are the answers reasonable and whatnot. Okay, because you want to try to avoid silly mistakes. We're all human, but you want to come up with systems to avoid that. All right, that's how you'll get the A. So 0.5 times negative 9.8 uh, multiplied by 2.91 squared. Okay, so the displacement here comes out to be negative, which it should, 41.5 meters. Okay, so we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. So what did I just find? I found the displacement. Now, I know this uh, picture is getting a little, uh, you know, filled with stuff. But I found the displacement from the top now to the bottom. Okay, so that x value now is equal to... I know it's negative, but I'm just gonna make it positive in the picture because I'm gonna do a little math to solve. Now think about it. If I know the value you know, from this location to this location, 
and I also know the value from this location to this location, how do I now find that little x I'm looking for in red? How do I now find the difference? Oh, I just told you, right? The difference between the two. Okay. So in order to find, then I'll call it x, right, in red. So the x that I'm solving for is going to equal the 75 meters minus the value I just found, the 41.5 meters. All right, so the x that I'm looking for, meaning the distance or the displacement that it travels in the last uh, one second of its travel will simply be 75 minus 41.5. And thinking about sig figs, this was really 75.0. So I'm going to have three sig figs, so this is 33.5 meters. Okay determine the distance traveled, right? So they didn't, yeah, so it's totally fine to leave the answer in the positive form. That should be 100% acceptable. All right, so notice in the, in the past, uh, excuse me, in the last one second, it travels almost half, right, of its total distance, right? The whole time it was in the air was about uh, four seconds, all right? Uh, but during that last second, it traveled the most. Why? Because the Gravitational force is now accumulated essentially on the object. All right. But guys, listen, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. And uh, please, if it did, do subscribe. Thank you.